Hello everyone and welcome to a new reading vlog. I am actually filming this intro a few days early. It's currently Saturday the 16th of March and I still have a few books that I technically need to finish before starting this vlog off. Saying that though, I did want to get this vlog started. I am notoriously bad at starting vlogs and if I haven't started them then it makes me not want to film any content throughout the week. So I thought I would get in here early, I would start filming for this vlog and that way I can just add to it throughout the week and there's a bit less pressure on me going forward. Please ignore Kiwi. She has grabbed some cardboard from somewhere and I'm just gonna let her carry it around for a few minutes before I take it off her. But anyway, the plan for this week, I'm not actually too sure what I want to do with this week yet. I have taken the majority of the week off from vlogging because I just was a bit overwhelmed with life stuff, house stuff. It was a bit crazy. If you've seen my previous vlog, you'll kind of get that vibe throughout. And yeah, I just needed to take some time to myself and prioritise my mental health. I didn't want to be on camera, but I was still really reading. However, I'm not going to talk about those specific books here now because I don't want to overload the vlog, but I will be talking about them in my monthly wrap-up, of course, so keep your eyes peeled for that. The one book I do know that I want to prioritise this week, though, is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. I have been reading fantasy books non-stop these last few weeks, which I'm definitely loving, but I do feel like now I want a change of pace and a change of setting. So I have decided to go for this one because it is a murder mystery book. I will just read you the the synopsis for this. It is quite short and I don't want to get anything wrong. So it says, on an idyllic private Greek island, former movie star Lana Farrar, an old friend, invites a select group of us to stay. It's hot, sunny, perfect, a chance to relax and reconnect and maybe for a few hidden truths to come out. But nothing on this island is quite what it seems. Not Lana, not her guests. Certainly not the murderer furiously plotting their crime. But who am I? My name is Elliot Chase and I'm going to tell you a story unlike any you've ever heard. I'm so excited for this book. For one, I love Greece. I have been there quite a few times and it's just a very idyllic setting that is just beautiful in every sense of the word. We then have an isolated setting, which again is a buzzword for me, and the fact that it's a murder mystery ticks off another box. So hopefully this is one that I do enjoy. I haven't read from Alex Michaelides before, but I do actually own two of his books. I own The Silent Page and the maidens so who knows if I enjoy this one I might have to prioritize the other books but I'm gonna focus on this one first and see whether or not I enjoy it now I have seen Beth from Books Nest read this recently and she did really enjoy it however she said that the narration style is a bit strange but if you can get past that and if you like that sort of thing then you shouldn't have too much of a problem with it so now that I'm aware of that I'm kind of gonna give it the benefit of the doubt if I don't quite connect to the writing style straight away but yeah this is a pretty short book it's about 350 odd pages and I'm planning to hopefully read this in one sitting tomorrow. That is one of the prompts for the readathon. For those of you who don't know, I'm not sure if I mentioned actually at the start of this clip. I am currently participating in Realmathon, which is a month-long readathon hosted by Cassidy over at Covers with Cassidy. I will have all the information linked down below for you guys, so please do check out the announcement video and Cassidy's channel herself. She has been vlogging throughout Realmathon and I just love her content in general and I'm sure that you will too. But I am on Team Shadows. This doesn't fulfill any specific prompts for Team Shadows, which is a bit of a shame, but there is a prompt in the readathon that I can take off, which is hopefully that I've read a book in one sitting. Now, I really think that I can do that with this one. I tend to fly through thrillers, so that should be the case. And as I mentioned, I'm just really in the mood for a thriller. I'm in the mood for a faster paced book, and I'm hoping that I can sit down tomorrow and fly through it. I've just checked the back of the book as well, and it says, Alex Michaelides was born in Cyprus to an English English mother and a Greek Cypriot father. So he is very familiar with Greece. I have been to both Greece and Cyprus. They're both lovely countries and I love the people that live there. So the setting in here is sure to be very serene and hopefully descriptive because I definitely want those holiday vibes right now and I'm definitely looking forward to summer. So hopefully I get that in this book. That is what has drawn me to this initially and yeah, I'm just wanting something different and a change of pace. As I mentioned though, I can't start this one just yet but I will hopefully be able to do so tomorrow, finish it in one sitting and that way I can update you guys on my thoughts on this one, possibly throughout the day but if not at least once I've finished it.
Good evening guys. Excuse the state of me. I am absolutely knackered. As you saw, I did have a hair appointment earlier on and I went straight from work to that hair appointment and then straight from that hair appointment to the gym. So I am definitely not looking my best. I don't know if you can actually tell a difference with my hair. It's just a little bit darker. We matched it a bit more to my natural root colour. So that is basically all we did and then yeah, I had to dash off to the gym. But I do have some reading updates for you. I did manage to to read the fury the other day in one sitting i haven't done that in such a long time and i felt so proud of myself i felt so accomplished and i am happy to say that this is a four star read for me now i know that may be a little bit controversial i have seen some pretty low ratings for this and i can understand why but i feel like this was exactly what i needed i needed a fast-paced book i needed a change of pace and a change of scenery as well i like that it was set on an isolated greek island and i think the main issue that people had was actually with the narrator and I went into it knowing that the narrator was a bit unreliable and maybe wasn't the best aspect of this book but in all honesty I was really intrigued I did really enjoy it of course it's hard to trust someone because if they're telling the story then they have some sort of a biased view and it worked really well here because it definitely made you question everything sorry Kiwi is scratching herself and she's moving the camera she always plonks herself right on my camera so I do apologize but yeah the best way I think I can describe this book is that it's a mixture of Glass Onion and Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie if you watch Glass Onion you can probably tell by what I've mentioned previously that there are some similarities we have a group of people on an isolated island and a murder occurs it's all about piecing together who did it and seeing events unfold as well this is told by the narrator but we do follow different characters if that makes sense so you do read about what all the characters have been doing you know you get their history and backstory and why they've decided to come to this island and then the reason I describe it as death on the Nile is again it has the same sort of plot points not in terms of the murder itself but in terms of the setting the way it made me feel we do have a situation here where our main character seemingly was interested in one person and then have decided to be in a relationship with another person so there's that aspect to it and Agatha Christie is mentioned throughout this quite a bit actually so I can definitely see some comparisons there. I will say this wasn't perfect I know that it does have some shortcomings but as I mentioned as a standalone thriller I really enjoyed it it gave me exactly what I needed I had a change of pace reading this and it was just very refreshing so all in all I personally did have a good time with this one. The reason that I didn't update you at all on Sunday was that I was having a really bad day mentally I wasn't feeling too great and so I basically sat in bed the whole day and just read this So I'm sorry I didn't update you guys then but yeah, I flew through it Very happy to have read it in one sitting and very happy to have completed another book for Realmathon And then I can't remember if I told you that I was gonna start this book But the next book that I am currently reading and have almost finished is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie Now I am listening to the audiobook and I did screenshot where I was before my appointment because because I haven't listened to it since. You can see that I screenshotted this at 5 to 4 and my appointment was at 4 so I was definitely running a little bit late. But there you go, I've got about an hour and a quarter left. I am flying through this audiobook, I absolutely love it. This is a reread for me and this time around I've decided to go for the audiobook narrated by Kenneth Branagh who if you don't know plays Poirot in the new adaptations of Agatha Christie's works. He also directs those films as well so he does have quite a deep connection to to Agatha Christie and her books. So far he has produced Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile and most recently A Haunting in Venice. They are some really good films, they're some of my favourites and I would highly recommend them if you haven't watched them already. But yeah I decided to go for his narration and I'm happy to say that I am really enjoying it. As I've mentioned he is well aware of what these characters would be like having worked with the actors, having read the core material I don't know how many times in order to create this film. So I would say it's a pretty good portrayal of what I imagine the narrator to be in a sense and yeah it's really good I'm enjoying it I'm following along fine I feel like the only downside to this book possibly is that it is confusing it's meant to be of course but we have so many different people with so many different backgrounds and reasons for being on the train and alibis for the night of the murder and things like that that you have to sort through and it's definitely one where you have to pay attention and I'm finding that I am able to pay attention to this and I'm able to follow along with what's going on I do think that I will be 
able to finish this tomorrow on my commute, possibly to work actually. I feel like I can smash it out. If not, it will definitely be listened to on my way back from work. So I will be finishing this tomorrow. I can't say too much more about it other than the fact that I'm loving this. This is one of my favourite murder mystery books of all time. It's so well done and I am excited to see how it all plays out again and especially with Kenneth Branagh narrating it as well. So definitely off to a great start. I read The Fury in one day and I've read this in, what, two days I want to say? Which I'm definitely happy about and yeah, I can't wait to finish this one off and choose my next read. Hi guys, sorry about the lighting. It is not the best but I just wanted to pop in here quickly to say that I have now finished Murder on the Orient Express and the first time around I gave it four stars for some reason but it's definitely a five star book. I loved it. I feel like it's such an amazing murder mystery if not the best which is why it has obviously so much hype but yeah I flew through that book. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to choose another audiobook just yet. We shall see but I've just gotten in from a training course. I've been on a swim whales course so I can basically teach our kids at school how to swim and be safe in the water in our swimming lessons so yeah that's what I've been doing today. It was very stressful but I did enjoy it and now I need to pack up a bunch of vintage parcels and pop to our house as well. So it's gonna be a busy night and I'll check in properly when I have some more time. Good afternoon guys. I have just had to actually check if it was the afternoon, but it is. It's just gone past 12 on Saturday, which means that today is the first day of my Easter holiday. I am so excited you guys. If you couldn't tell by my appearance, I feel like I desperately need this. I need a recharge and hopefully Easter is going to allow me to do that. Now I do have to work on the house of course we have to grit all of the walls ready for the plasterers to come in but for this weekend I'm trying not to think about that I'm just relaxing and trying to clear my head as best I can essentially because yeah as I mentioned I definitely need it. The other day I did mention very quickly to you guys that I did finish Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie now I'm very confused because I checked Goodreads and when I first read this one I gave it four stars and I genuinely don't know why this is one of the best written murder mystery books out there. I had such an amazing time with it even though I've read the book so many times and I've watched the film and adaptation so many times. I love this story so much. It's so compelling. I love trying to find clues throughout that kind of give me an inclination as to who did it. Obviously if you've read this you know the big plot twist but it's just so well done throughout and Agatha Christie is genuinely such an amazing writer. I'm so glad that I did reread this one. I wasn't going to. If you don't know I have been making my way through the Poirot books by Agatha Christie. I've read all the Miss Marple ones and loved them and so yeah I'm tackling Poirot and this one was the next book that I needed to read in order to continue on with this series. Now for those of you asking on the back of the original paperbacks it does have a kind of reading order I suppose. It's a book list and I'm using it as a reading order and this was the next one and because I'd read it so much I wasn't planning on picking it up however as I mentioned I'm so glad that I did. I really love the characters in here, Poirot in particular of course but I like seeing him in a different setting with a very complex murder mystery that's happened and a large cast of characters who seem to all be innocent. I will say that I have now upped this rating to a five star. This book is phenomenal, it definitely deserves it and it has cemented itself as one of my favourite books. And then I have actually made quite a bit of a dent in my next book for this vlog which the cover for is here because as I mentioned I've been reading it and I don't read books with the dust jacket on. But the book that I've decided to pick up is After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. Neil, this is one that has been on my shelves for years and I think I've just been intimidated by it. I believe that Karis first mentioned this to me and told me she thought I would love it and I was looking at my shelves for some different books to read for Realmathon and I knew this had a black cover so I pulled it out, I reread the synopsis and I just decided to give it a go. So in this one we are set on an island off the coast of Ireland. It's an island called Inishroon I want to say, I'm really sorry if I am butchering that pronunciation but we are following a very isolated community. Everyone knows each other and one day an English businessman comes to the island and essentially wants to transform it into more of a touristy hub. He kind of settles there, he marries a local girl and that's that it seems. However one day this couple have a party and at that party a young girl is found dead. And it just says here, it was impossible to get off the island that night. The killer couldn't have escaped Inishrun but no one was charged with the murder. The mystery that surrounded the death of this young girl remained hidden. 
but the islanders knew who to blame for the crime that changed them forever. Ten years later, a documentary crew arrives there to lift the lid off the Kinsella's carefully constructed lives, determined to find evidence that will prove Henry's guilt and Keelan's complicity in the murder of this girl. Now, she is mentioned in the synopsis, but I'm not going to say the name just because I feel like it's a bit of a spoiler, I don't know. And it just says, in this bold, brilliant, disturbing new novel, Louise O'Neill shows that deadly secrets are devastating to those who hold them close. So if you know me and my reading taste, you'll know that this is definitely one that I'm intrigued by. The fact that there's a kind of true crime documentary being made about this case is something that I'm definitely interested in because I myself am an avid true crime consumer. So it's one I've been anticipating for a while, but yeah, I've just never prioritized it. That is until now, of course. As I mentioned, I have made quite a in this one. I'm up to page 252 which is chapter 33 and I've essentially just been chipping away at this all week ever since finishing The Fury. So far I will say that I am enjoying this one. It's definitely a slower paced novel compared to The Fury. I flew through that book in one day as you saw. This one I feel like you do need to take your time with it. It's definitely a slower paced book. I feel like you get a lot of information, you are introduced to a lot of different characters as well because of course they're making a documentary, they're wanting to interview people who are somewhat connected to the case and so you do need to kind of concentrate a bit more on this one. I will say that the atmosphere is fantastic. I love an isolated setting so the fact that we are on an island in this is really working for me especially because the person who killed this girl is on the island. There was a massive storm on the night of the murder and they couldn't have come and gone from the island without anyone knowing so there is suspicion around everyone but there is suspicion around one character in particular and we follow this character and their close circle as they try to prove their innocence. That's all I'm going to say on this one so far. My plan today is to just sit down now and finish this book. I have gotten up this morning and I've done a bit of a spring clean so the house is nice and tidy. I am going to make some lunch now though. I feel like I'm going to have a my protein pizza just because it's easy, it's convenient, it's in the freezer and it'll take like 20 minutes. And then I'm going to make myself a coffee and fly through this book because I need caffeine today. I'm really trying to not drink as much caffeine but I definitely feel like I need it and especially with the fact that I'm gonna curl up now on the sofa I definitely think that I will fall asleep otherwise so that is the plan hopefully I can finish it out for you guys because I want to give you guys my thoughts on it and yeah that is essentially the plan so I am going to leave you guys here I'm going to sort myself out put my lunch in the oven and I guess I will chat to you guys once I finish this because I don't plan on stopping now until I have so we'll see what what my final thoughts on this book are. guys it's a lot later now it is currently 20 to 11 at night and I have had to put the ring light on just because it's so dark but I did want to update you and let you guys know that I have in fact finished After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. I finished this quite a while ago actually but I just didn't feel like talking straight after it. I feel like I wanted time with my thoughts to kind of get my head around what I actually thought of this book and wanted to rate it. So as you saw I had my caffeine, I had my pizza, it definitely needed that garlic dip that was fantastic I then sat down read the book took Kiwi for a walk and then Tom and I have watched The Apprentice and we've also started watching the Australian version of The Traitors so that pretty much took up the rest of our evening and I also made that fake away which you will have seen which I have to say 
is lovely. That is genuinely the best fake away I've ever made. So if you're interested in a chicken curry that tastes exactly like one that you get from the Chinese, then buy that Mayflower powder. I think I will have shown it in the clip, but yeah, it's phenomenal and it's definitely going to be a go-to from here on out. Anyway, back to the book. My previous thoughts still stand with this one. It was a slow book. The documentary element unfortunately didn't quite hit the spot for me. It wasn't highlighted as much as I thought it would be. It was definitely prominent and it was a big theme throughout and it's how we spoke to a lot of the characters but I feel like what came from that just wasn't satisfying. And saying that as well, the way that it ended, I was expecting a big plot twist and I was expecting to be quite wowed by it and I just wasn't. It was just a pretty okay story. We didn't really get any revelations. I feel like it didn't really lead us anywhere. So I have settled on a three star rating for this one. I feel like that is a little bit harsh because I did enjoy the story as a whole but because of the pacing and because of how the murder mystery element played out I feel like a three star rating is a pretty solid one and who knows if I change my mind further down the line if this book stays with me then I can always up it but for now it's a solid three star. I did enjoy it. I would recommend it but it is a book that you kind of do have to pay attention to and work your way through at a slower pace. So all in all, I have had a pretty good reading week. I of course read The Fury in a day last week, which is crazy. I also gave this one four stars. This was an isolated murder mystery. It was very fast paced and this did have a few twists and turns and it did have a narrator that was pretty unreliable throughout and that's all I'm gonna say for this one. Then I of course read Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie which I gave five stars to. This is one of the best murder mysteries out there and I had such a good time revisiting it. And then lastly of course we have After the Silence which I gave three stars to. Again not a bad book at all. I really enjoyed my time reading it. It just wasn't quite what I expected and the pacing and the whole murder mystery reveal was just a little bit off for me. I feel like this is a really good wrap up though because I've read a book that's been on my TBR for years. I've reread a favourite and I've also read a new release. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that this has been a successful reading week for me. It isn't really that successful for Realmathon in terms of the extra prompts because this one doesn't fulfil any of the extra prompts nor does this one and this one only fulfils the prompt for our team colour which is a book with a black cover. So not really getting the bonus points which is a shame but as I mentioned I'm really happy that I did manage to read these and it's definitely scratched that murder mystery itch that I've been craving recently. If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and leave me a train emoji. Of course I read Murder on the Orient Express and I feel like a train emoji is pretty fitting because that is the main setting of this book. I know I say it all the time but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me. It blows me away that you guys watch these all the way through. Hopefully this vlog has hasn't been as long as the previous one. I really have tried not to waffle on so much but regardless whether you make it to the end of a short video for me or one of my longer ones I truly do appreciate it. So if you are still here but don't have anything in particular that you would like to say please do go ahead and comment that now. As well as that please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me but that is it for me today guys. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!